And we're back, just saving the recording so that if GarageBand crashes, it will erase less of my data. Doing some mad junctioning. Woo. Yeah, actually, I decided that that was what I wanted on her. Oh, but Squall now has can use the speed plus 40% rather than speed plus 20%. If, if your speed is like 100 or over, then basically you will have turns almost constantly. Nice. It makes me so sad. The junctioning system is, is such an interesting idea, and it could have been implemented so much better. I agree. Like, I mean, there's just so much you can do with it, but they just kind of wound, wound up picking the worst way possible. Back in the 90s, they, they probably would have something different, different later on. Well, the, the thing is that in the Final Fantasy games, they will go with, you know, they they have to change something every game, and so they don't always get it exactly right. Yeah, but it seems like, mm -hmm. it, it seems like they change one thing and go kind of, they go sort of all out on that, but then all the other things, they just kind of... I just, they just kind of leave behind. Like, for example, uh, you know, they make some changes with this game, but then for a lot of it, it's just kind of poorly implemented. Or in Final Fantasy XIII, they got the core battles really, really good, but the weapon upgrade system is awful, where it could have been implemented so much better. It just seems like they focus on one thing too much, and then they just forget about every other part of their gameplay. Well, not to mention they forgot about the whole, like, you know, visiting towns and talking to people thing. Well, I, I think that to be fair, the visiting town and talking to people thing, that kind of makes sense in terms of the game, because you are public enemy number one. That's true, that's true. Like, I always thought that was a poor, um, that was pretty bad, uh, uh, um, criticism of it, because it just wouldn't make sense in the story. And the linear thing, get... Like, it doesn't make much sense at the beginning, but then later on it kind of makes more sense as it's sort of revealed, like, everything is being controlled from the top. But even then, it could have been implemented better to have more exploration and more focus on on just, like, finding different stuff and whatever. But even then, you know, there are different problems with it or whatever. Lesson okay. from Final Fantasy XIII. Never trust the Pope. <laughs> Why are you guys racist against Pope, um, the Pope? What did he do to you? What do you he mean racist? Into a giant robot. What do you. Uh, racist. I do not think that word means what you think it means. No, I mean, uh, and, and in terms of the game, I don't mean the actual Pope. I just mean the game Pope. It, it has nothing to do with racism. He's a giant robot. And I mean, as, I, as the creators of Lost might say, a bad robot. <laughs> did anyone else not get that? That robot is the studio that did Lost. Sorry about that. Anyway, the red propagators are both dead now, so we know where both of the green ones are. <clears throat> Let's get them. Are there any other colors besides the red ones? There's purple, there's red, there's green, and there's yellow. Ran in, I ran into one of the yellow guys accidentally. <clears throat> it's like, if you enter that screen, then you're automatically put into a battle with the yellow guy. Oh, are we finally going to see what Angel Wing does? Yes, we are. I just got him going on a huge marathon watch of all of Trigun. So I keep thinking it says Angel Arm. Lots of age references in the, these types of games. Colin, Jen said uh, she might be going to uh, to Otakon. Are you considering that? Um, no. Because, you know, that's, that's right in my neighborhood, so I'm going to be there. Where is it? Baltimore. Yeah, I don't think... Like... I don't think... It would be too short notice. I haven't even heard of it. Uh, that it was happening. Oh, it, it, it's at the end. It's at the end of July. I don't know. It, it, I'm not really a huge like anime person, so. Oh, I'm not either. I just think that it's a fun convention. Well, there's stuff there that's besides anime, video game stuff. I went to one that's other stuff besides anime. 
Anyway, so what Angel Wing does is it's essentially Berserk, except that instead of physical attacks, it's magic. You can't choose which spells she'll cast, but her spell power is increased significantly. And she does not... And whatever spell she casts do not get used up from your stock. In fact, you don't even have to have the spell in the stock. So it's basically a one-time, like, uh, boost of one spell. No, no, she keeps casting them. Oh. The effect ends only if she's knocked out or if the battle is over. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I don't understand what the whole thing was that it, with that is. It seems like there, this is a new thing. Oh, it's like 2010. Well, like the whole sort of weird brony subculture. The weird what, what what was that word? The brony subculture. Brony? Bronies are are you know basically grown ass men who like my little pony. Yeah, I, I I mean I I don't know much about that. that that'd be like saying you're, you're a fantasy fan if you play Final Fantasy. I never understood labels like that. I did see a funny shirt that had like an outline of a pony and it in white, and then it was blue on the left side and and red on the white side, and it said MLP on the bottom, you know, instead of MLB, Major League Baseball. Yeah, like I said, you can avoid this guy as long as you don't, like, you don't have to fight this guy unless you go into that enclosed area that he's in, and then, then he'll attack you. Is that little yellow thing on its head, its eyes? I have no idea about these things' anatomy. That is not explained. Oh, they all just share the same character model. Yes, they do. They are just talent swaps. I thought they looked different, like they had different numbers of arms or whatever, but I just kind of... I guess I just saw it or something. Nope, just palette swaps. Yep. Oh, well, it's just one type of enemy. Like, it's eight of them, so I guess I shouldn't expect too much. Of course, there aren't too many palette swaps in this game because the enemies level up with you, so that really do yeah. you really don't need to have them. There is at least one that I can think of, though. It involves a couple of bosses that we haven't encountered yet. Although, it could be, it would be kind of neat if, like, best neat, I guess they could have included power swaps by, like, having it so different. Like, it switches level on talents depending on, sort of, its level. Like, once it levels up alongside you to be, say, level 10, it switches to a different color. That would have been handy. Yeah, because then you could sort of, like, more easily gauge the strength of them. Okay, so that message tells you that you're not getting into the cockpit in, until all of these guys are dead. So it has locking for emergency situations. Why didn't it work on the outside, then? Oh yeah, that's true. That's a very good question. Uh, this game has a plot hole, guys! There's a problem with this game! There's a plot hole! And yeah, there's a giant monster who has to kill us. Yes, well, I knew it was coming this time. Well, it pushes you off the screen. That doesn't mean that you're suddenly, uh... Safe, I yes. I, I like the way that battles, like... I, I, lo I love it in games where, you know, you're able to see them on the um, overworld, sort of like this one or whatever. But, um... Well, I guess it's not all the time or whatever, but... Um, but, like, say you're able to use... Like, use the attack button, or... It, for example, in Earthbound, when you go up to an enemy and it, you know, it's lower level and you will actually try to run away, and if you're so above level, then it'll just instantly just give you the win. Like yep. <laughs> I love that. It saves I, time. I like it a little bit even more in Mother 3, where if you hit, if you walk into it normally, um, no matter what, it'll start the battle, but if you run into it, it'll, it'll bounce off the screen. <laughs> You'll hit it and it'll bounce off, bounce away, and then and, and, and die, and you'll get everything. It, it it's it's kind of funny. Uh, it's kind of funny too. 
Yeah, I, I finished. I recently finished an Earthbound LP on on my yeah. channel. So this is the explanation of the propagators. Also, it is aliens. Yeah, I guess so. They all fit together, I guess. And I love how they put this report together, but they don't bother like. If they had Something. this report, can they just like give you a weapon to use? Or something? Well, there is not a weapon, it's a tactic you have to use. And they're giving you the tactic. Um, yes, because you're giving you a gun would be not as useful. Wait, were you able to read this before going through all this, or... Oh... This isn't the first time I've played this game. No, I'm saying, like, if this was your first time playing it... You would have, would you have had to battle them all anyway to find out that hint, or? You might. Mm. I don't remember what, what Steven and I did. Whether we did kill a bunch of them and get frustrated that they were all reviving, I don't remember. Anyway, the other yellow guy is right where you started this whole sequence. Which doesn't make much sense, because the monster must have snuck in there after Squall and Renoa had come out there. Yeah. Speaking of taking a nap. every single sound with like you know like sounds made through your mouth you know, no like, I haven't so like, also like like whenever there's like a bolt that's off the beep, beep, uh, that reminds me of that reminds me of switch panic have you seen that game uh, it's like familiar. a really obscure game it was for Sega CD or something like that a switch yeah or panic yeah and, the it wasn't called Switch Panic, it was either called Switch or Panic, I think. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Cy Cypheron48 plays it when he's giving, like, his sort of update, channel updates. That's a good, that, that seems like a great game to do that over. Because it's not really even a game, it's just more like... Press button just... and see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, the sound effects in that game are, are largely, you know, people people using their voices to imitate sound effects. I love it. I, I absolutely love it when that happens because it just sounds so cheesy and you just can't help but laugh at it. You really like cheesy and camp things, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. They're hilarious. I mean, not for anything like serious or whatever, but when you need a laugh, that, you know, cheesy sort of camp stuff can be the best. Like, did you... Hold on. So, we've killed off all the guys, then. Yes, the propagators are all gone, which means the cockpit can now be opened. Yay! Which makes no sense, because how would it know the... Oh, never mind. It, it's a ship that's full in space, why should I be questioning stuff like this? I, 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 I don't think it's that implausible that it could sense whether there were, you know, life forms there other than people. Look, Esther has more advanced technology than than most of the world. I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm not saying that's excuse, an excuse for everything that happens, but it does make some of it more plausible. 